Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi folks, here is the weekend edition of ASEAN News. Still with me, Vanessa. Tokyo records 4,000 new COVID-19 infections in five days. Tokyo reports more than 4,000 new cases of COVID-19 for five consecutive days. This is because Japan is hosting the Olympics. Japan reported daily COVID-19 infections of 14,472 with 4,066 in Tokyo. Tokyo's daily average number of new cases in the last seven days rose to 4,037 exceeding 4,000 for the first time. According to the Japanese media Kyoto News, the epidemic in Tokyo presents an, an explosive spread trend. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga reiterated earlier that the rapid deterioration of the epidemic has nothing to do with hosting the Olympic Games. In view of the epidemic, the Japanese government announces that the key epidemic prevention measures will be expanded from the current five regions to 13 regions and last until the end of August, as in the six regions, including Tokyo, which are under the state of epidemic prevention emergency. Indonesia argues Myanmar approves appointment envoy of the ASEAN. Indonesia's Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi urges Myanmar to approve the appointment of an ASEAN special envoy to the country. 100 hari sudah berlalu sejak ALM bertemu di Jakarta. 100 days have passed since the day of the ASEAN leaders meeting in Jakarta. I frankly express that ASEAN has made no significant progress on implementing the five-point plan on Myanmar. Indonesia hopes Myanmar will immediately approve the appointment of a special envoy. Indonesia hopes this ASEAN Foreign Minister meeting will decide on a special envoy according to the ASEAN proposal, including its clear mandates and commitment by the Myanmar military to give access for the special envoy to do its tasks. Indonesia juga menekankan Six months after the military toppled Myanmar's democratically elected government, ASEAN foreign ministers meet to finalize the appointment of an envoy tasked with ending violence and promoting dialogue between the junta and its opponents. Talking to media by video conference, Marsudi says the group had made no significant progress on implementing its five-point plan to stop the turmoil in Myanmar, which was announced in April. The United Nations and many countries, including the United States and China, have urged ASEAN, whose 10 members include Myanmar, to spearhead diplomatic efforts to restore stability in Myanmar. Myanmar has been racked by a deadly crackdown on protest, economic collapse and refugee exodus since the February 1st coup, a surge in coronavirus infections has overwhelmed its health system, worsening the humanitarian crisis in the past months. Six months after coup, Myanmar's junta chiefs become prime minister. The state media reports Myanmar's military ruler, Myung Oh Leng, takes a new title as a prime minister of a newly formed caretaker government after six months the army seized power from a civilian government. Ming Oh Leng chairs the military-backed State Administration Council that has run Myanmar since it was formed after the February 1st coup and the caretaker government will replace it. A news reader on State Miawadi Television says, in order to perform the country's duties fast, easily and effectively, the State Administration Council has been reformed as caretaker government of Myanmar. He gives a televised address and pledged elections without giving a time frame and cooperation with the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. ASEAN appoints Brunei diplomat as envoy to Myanmar. The group says foreign ministers from the ASEAN appoints Brunei's second minister for foreign affairs, Erwan Yusof, as special envoy to Myanmar. Adanya appointment of the special envoy, uh, yaitu Menlu. There was an appointment of a special envoy for Brunei, Foreign Minister Datok Erwan. This special envoy will immediately start this task with a clear timeline, 
and will be granted full access to all parties in Myanmar. This special envoy will report to the upcoming ministerial summit that will be held in September. According to a communique released, after meetings by the bloc's foreign ministers, everyone has been tasked with ending violence in Myanmar, opening dialogue between the military ruler and their opponents in the crisis-torn country. The diplomat also oversee a humanitarian aid package, although no details of the assistance were announced. Myanmar's military toppled a democratically elected government since months ago, plunging the country into turmoil as security forces suppressed protests and its economic collapse. The humanitarian crisis worsened in the past month as coronavirus infections surged, overwhelming the health system. Cambodian Stars Booster shoots to citizens to fight the spread of coronavirus pandemic. Cambodia begins offering a third dose booster shot against COVID-19 in an effort to fight the spread of the coronavirus in the country. Switching between the AstraZeneca and Chinese COVID-19 vaccines, 500,000 to 1 million frontline workers and their family members in seven provinces bordering Thailand will be among the first to receive the vaccine. Cambodia has launched a lockdown in eight provinces bordering Thailand in the first week of August in a bid to prevent the spread of the Delta variant of the coronavirus in the Southeast Asian country. The World Health Organization says that the Delta variant has been detected amongst migrants returning from Thailand through the land borders and now in the local community. Cambodia managed to largely contain the virus for most of last year, but an outbreak first detected in late February has driven up total cases to 81,335 with 1,537 deaths. Thailand anti-government holding protests against the Prime Minister on handling the pandemic crisis. In Thailand, Thai anti-government protesters taken to the streets in cars and motorbikes showing dissatisfactions with the head of the government, Prayut Chan Ocha, handling of the coronavirus crisis. The participants on various vehicles formed a long line stretching over 20 kilometers through Bangkok, honking horns and raising the three-finger salute, a gesture of resistance inspired by the Hunger Games movie. We can barely make a living now. All of my family members are affected. The government failed to provide vaccines on time. Many of us here haven't even had vaccines yet, including those at home too. If we don't come out to make our demand, the government will simply ignore us. So that's why we came out today. Thailand has been grappling with its biggest coronavirus outbreak so far. It reports 18,027 new cases and 132 new deaths, bringing total accumulated cases to 615,314 and 4,990 fatalities. The country extends tighter containment measures in Bangkok and high-risk provinces until the end of August to slow spread. Thailand police starts investigating Swiss tourist death near Phuket Falls. Official says Thailand investigates the death of 57-year-old Swiss tourist after her body was found near a waterfall she had been residing close to on the resort island of Phuket with signs she had died of unnatural causes. The police investigate the cause of death, and if the victim was murdered, we will arrest the perpetrator immediately. At the moment, we can't confirm the cause of death yet, as it is still under the investigation process. The woman was visiting under the Phuket Sandbox Scheme, a pilot project to allow in vaccinated foreign tourists to help revive a sector decimated by COVID-19 pandemic. Phuket Governor Narong Wonchu adds that she had arrived on the island on July 13. 
Kitirat Panpec, commander of the police department overseeing Phuket, in an interview with the MCOT television says, the woman appears to have been dead for three days before her body was found partially unclothed. Kitirat adds, the results of an autopsy will be ready. South Korea extends social distancing for two weeks to reduce COVID-19 cases. Health authorities say South Korea extends its social distancing curbs by two weeks as the government contends with outbreaks nationwide and more people fall severely ill. The government tightened restrictions last week across most of the country ahead of the country's peak summer holiday period. Seoul and surrounding regions have banned private gatherings of more than two people after 6 p.m. and any gatherings of more than four people are prohibited in the rest of the country. The government says the restrictions are crucial to stamping out cases and ensuring a safe reopening of schools in two weeks. Health experts call for tougher social distancing rules as the number of severe COVID-19 cases has doubled in three weeks, driven largely by young unvaccinated people and slow a vaccination drive. The mortality rate remains relatively low at 1.02%, while severe cases rose by 7 to 376. The Korean Disease Control Agency reports 1,704 new cases, that bringing the total to 207,406 infections with 2,113 deaths. Malaysia's opposition marches in parliament and demands Prime Minister resign after he delays sitting in parliament amid political turmoil. Malaysia's opposition lawmakers marches on the country's parliament building to demand the resignation of Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin after the Premier defers a parliamentary sitting amidst political turmoil. Muhyiddin cited the detection of COVID-19 infections for postponing the final parliamentary session scheduled by the opposition called it a political motivated move to block any challenges to his leadership. Opposition lawmaker marches towards the parliament building but are stopped by the police in riot gear. Today we are gathered to state that, in terms of the number of members of parliament that we have here, Muidin's government, with him as prime minister, has fallen and collapsed today. I also received information that there are no other parties that have already submitted a list asking to leave the National Alliance. He explained all 107 opposition lawmakers are united in seeking the Premier's resignation for going against the Constitution and the King's decree and blocking lawmakers from carrying out their duties. China provides 770 million doses of vaccine to the world to help countries fight the COVID-19 pandemic. China sent 770 million doses of coronavirus vaccines to over 100 countries and organizations ranking first in the world in terms of vaccines offered to the international community as the country strives to make COVID-19 vaccines more available in developing countries. Chinese president says China will strive to provide 2 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses to the world throughout this year and offer 100 million US dollars to COVAX, marking a further step by China in honoring its commitment to making vaccines a global public good. Meanwhile, Li Baodong, Secretary General of the Bao Forum for Asia says China has always put people's life first and when some developed economies were stockpiling vaccines, China adopted an open and cooperative attitude providing vaccines to developing countries in need. Chinese vaccines have been added to the WHO list of vaccines approved for emergency use and the COVAX program and have so far been approved for use in more than 100 countries, demonstrating their safety and efficacy. In addition, some Chinese institutions have joined hands with more than 20 countries in carrying out phase 3 clinical trials. China also supports waiving intellectual property rights for COVID-19 vaccines for developing countries. 
And that's the end for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your weekend.